So Blackwater, let's touch on Blackwater. How did that come about? Obviously, in your book, it says life, death, and madness in the killing fields of Iraq. What is Blackwater for people who don't know? Blackwater is an American private security company <clears throat> formed by a former Navy SEAL uh, officer called Eric Prince. Um, it, became, it was actually a targeting type uh, CQB close quarter battle uh, training facility in uh, Moyoc in, um, in the States. Um, when the Iraq war started, Eric Prince is very Republican. Um, he supported the Republican Party, you know, big time. He uh, applied and got permission to set up a security firm to look after the State Department contracts in, in Iraq. So the State Department had a big part to play in, in, in the way Americans did everything uh, in, in, the, in Iraq. Um, so he provided security, or his people su su provided security for Paul Bremer, who was the Bush's representative in, in Iraq, in Baghdad. Um, and then from there, you know, uh, it, it became, uh, he got other contracts, you know, with different other agencies with the three letters to do other sorts of things. And then the company expanded and expanded. How I got involved into it was when I first went to Iraq, I was actually in the Philippines doing some training. And, um, you know, the war started. And we were watching because we heard rumors that uh, private contractors would be allowed to come and, and, and do some of the stuff. Now, Back in those days, there, were, there wasn't private contractors. There was mercenaries, okay? And really the only people who, who did that sort of work was South Africans or, or the British and what they called the circuit, you know? And the circuit back in the 70s and the 80s was you'd go to the Congo, you'd go to Angola, you know, and you'd fight with Mad Mike Hoare and lots of people, you know, um, back in, you know, basically jungle warfare and, and whatever else. Private contractors was... Uh, was to help provide the security for those in the rebuilding process of Iraq after they'd finished completely destroying everything it had to be built again. And Dick Cheney and his, you know, he goes, well, you know, there's a lot more money in destroying everything and rebuilding it, so we, those guys are going to need security. I went over with a company called uh, Custer Battles, providing close protection for some guys uh, as they did their daily job, uh, their, their daily work. And, and I was very disillusioned. The money wasn't good. The, the equipment wasn't good. No, I'm back one off of it. The money was good because I was earning no money at the time. So $200 a day from earning $0 a day was fantastic. Um, one of the guys within Custer Battles was very disillusioned as well, like the rest of us, and he reached out. He was an ex-Navy SEAL. He reached out to Eric Prince and said, well, there's a huge opportunity here for security for the rebuilding process. You don't need the, um, the high-level security clearances you do for the State Department because these aren't State Department contracts and there's more, you know, millions and mil millions of dollars more that you can be making. Um, he was given the green light. So he had these different interviews and, uh, he, you know, I was the only non-American in Custer Battles. So I arranged to have a meeting with this guy and uh, he was former SEAL Team 6, which is their Tier 1 um, within the SEALs. And SAS, of course, is Tier 1 as well. So he knew of my background and, and we started talking and I said, well, you know, you mind if I join you in forming up this new wing? He said, yeah, of course, you know, come on board. And I said, well, here's another thing, you know, do you mind if I, uh, I become the team leader? And, and I said, you know, I'm the only tier one guy here with you. So, you know, the standard I'm, I'm trained to, no one else is. And he said, yeah, I have no problem with that. And then he goes, well, do you know how much we're going to be earning now? And I said, no, I don't. And he said, $600 a day. You know, my balls jumped into my throat and I went, <clears throat> yeah, I can handle that. You know, really I was doing flips and cartwheels. And then one day, you know, one night we just, sorry, we uh, we all handed our resignation into Custer Battles, jumped in a couple of soft skin SUV Suburbans and drove off to uh, the Ahamra Hotel in, in Karata in Baghdad and formed Blackwater Commercial. Yeah. What was that like? That was, you know, and that was great. That was really good. It was It was like a weight had been lifted off. We had no guns. We had no armor. We had absolutely nothing. And the military prepares you for that, believe it or not, because, you know, you can make the most out of a crappy situation and you've got something in your brain that says, you know, I'm going to make this work. And that's how it sort of started with us. The guy who set it up, um, I won't mention his name, you know, he, he put me in charge of all the guys and we were running around buying guns with what little money we had. 
um, buying, you know, where there was no armor, there was nothing. Uh, he was looking for contracts. So when, when he found contracts, we'd go out and we'd do them and we'd start to make a little bit more money and a little bit more money. And then it came to the point where, okay, uh, Moyox realized that we were actually quite a viable option in another part of the company that can be uh, making money for it. So we got the green, uh, another green light, which basically said, okay, well, here's the finance that you guys are going to need in order to, to run the show. Um, and it was, it was starting something from nothing with just an idea and improving its, you know, improving its worth and making it work. It was quite a, quite a good sense of achievement. What was the story with your, the friends? I don't know if they get burned alive or they get mm -hmm. hung in the, the town centre. What mm -hmm. was that story? When was that? Yeah, that was in April, uh, in of April 2004. So when I, when I first came back, so we did, we did, uh, November, December 2003, aka, um, the Blackwater commercial. We had, we had no money at all. We were just trying to be viable. I met, I, I met one of the guys, Jerry, um, and we started the, uh, sorry, and, um, so I'm going to start again, mate. Yeah. Um, so I met Jerry in January, sorry, of 2004. I'd already been with Blackwater for the end of November and December of 2003. Um, and we did close protection together in, in, uh, in Kabbalah and, and, and Baghdad and all that. Now, when we finished around April, Jerry was put in, in charge of a team to escort some um, catering flatbed trucks. You know, we had, oh, Blackwater Commercial had won a contract with uh, a company that supplied catering products for, um, for the different military bases. They went out on a job, and um, it was meant to take 48 hours, 72 max, but they would be tasked with um, escorting some flatbed trucks to one of the marine bases in uh, Fallujah. Now, Fallujah at that time was a no-go area. Everybody knew that. You know, you stay away from Fallujah, they will kill you. You know, they, it was the graveyard for Americans. All the insurgency was was taking root there. All the uh, foreign fighters that were coming into Iraq were going to Fallujah for their training and everything else like that. And um, the Americans were actually furnishing weapons and uh, training to the Iraqi police who were also insurgents in Fallujah. You know, they wore both hats. So they were being well armed already but by the Americans. Anyway, so the guys went through, they went from Taji to uh, find this marine base in the outskirts of Fallujah somewhere and they stopped off at the uh, an Iraqi police checkpoint and they asked directions. Now, the Iraqi checkpoint was, um, and they were insurgents as well, just wearing the uniforms. They directed them through Fallujah. When, when they drove through, it was completely undermanned and not really well you know, properly prepared. There was two guys in the front vehicle in a soft skin Pajero for, uh, SUV, three flatbed trucks, nothing on them, and one soft skin Pajero in the back with another two guys. Okay, so there was no rear cover, there was no side covers, there was only two guys facing forward. They drove through. The Iraqi police called up the insurgency, say, hey, we've got a very soft target coming through. And so they set up an ambush. When the uh when they when the when the convoy drove into town and they were well hemmed in because there was also very high um medium barriers between the lanes, so they couldn't drive or jump, you know, from one lane to another. They had blocked off the front, they had blocked off the back. The uh, insurgents snuck up behind the the front. Sorry, the insurgents snuck up behind the back two guys, shot them in the head, shot them in the back, killed them, stripped them of their, their guns and armor. Uh, the two guys in the front heard the gunfire uh, and then went to spin it around, busted the tires, got stuck. They got shot, they got killed. Their weapons got stripped off them. And um, you know, the attackers left and then the crowd the, the Fallujah population started beating, burning them, setting them on fire, um, and did all the carnage that we saw on TV, and then uh, strung two of them up from um, the bridge. They had burnt corpses over the bridge and uh, the of the Euphrates River. I was in the team house, and I I, I cover this in the book. And um, one of the women who was our housekeeper, Rose, she let out this almighty scream when she was cleaning. She saw it happening live on TV, or on TV. And so we came in to see what she was looking at. And um, I had this really, you know, I sort of, 
that looks like one of our vehicles because I was very familiar with them. I've been driving around and damn things. And um, so I was asking, you know, I said, you know, any, anybody heard from the guys who who went to Taji? And, and no one had. And so we started watching, we were watching it and watching it. And then, of course, it dawned on me, it said, you know, those are our guys. And I, I, I again described the emotions I was going through was it was like, because up to then, Iraq was still relatively safe. I mean, yeah, you, you, you risked it, but there wasn't anywhere near the amount of attacks that happened after that. That was the main change, pivotal point in that whole war uh, was when our guys got killed in Fallujah. Before, it was someone would shoot at us, you know, we'd have to do whatever we had to do. Now it was it was kind of war. We were now involved in it. And as I say in the book, we were... We were no longer contractors. We were mercenaries now. You know, you do that to us, we're going to do that to you.